Hi guys, in this demo, we're gonna talk about how to transfer your image for the dry point, as well as how we're going to set the pressure for your printing. So I have already gone through the process of creating my image, and this is a one-to-one -one scale uh, sketch of my uh, image. So you guys are using the clear card, and as you guys see the plate actually matches very closely the dimension of my plate uh, at the sketch and the plate so it's gonna be super simple since uh, we are gonna do a direct drawing on the plate of my sketch and since the plate is translucent I can simply place my plate right on the mark of my perimeter and with my uh, etching needle I'm going to simply retrace that. And just remember that it will still print backwards so if mm -hmm. that's important reverse your image before you start this process. Yes. Something that you guys are going to experience is how it feels to move this very sharp needle on top of this surface so it'll take some practice it'll take a little bit of uh, understanding how to move uh, across curves uh, how to do cross hatching and dots uh, but it'll take just simply some practice some attempts and you guys will be will notice that it's a really interesting feeling because it's not like drawing on paper or drawing on any other surface uh, so it, it has a really interesting feel to the to the entire process so i'm just gonna like finish uh retrace some of these lines and then once i am done i will be ready to print Oh, uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, I won't be ready to print right away. <laughs> I need to set the pressure first. And that's something that is very, very important. It's for you guys to remember to always uh, set the pressure before you ink your plate. All right. So let's move on to the press. So my press right now has been set to zero. That means that the roller is gently touching the table. So there, there is no, no space, almost no space in between the bed and the, and the roller. Now, you guys are gonna find your blankets right here in this bin. And we're gonna be very careful, very gentle at handling these blankets. So, how I like to set my pressure is by uh, moving the bed all the way out to one side. So once I have the larger area available, I will uh, put my blankets on. So the order of the blankets is actually very important. And uh, what you guys wanna do is uh, set them in a specific order. So it's super simple, it's very, very simple. As you guys are gonna notice that there is always uh, one thin, quite soft blanket, which is called the catcher. There is another one that is quite thicker, it's called the pusher. I'm sorry, it's, it's called the cushion. And then the last one, uh, which is the one on top, the one that receives all of the mechanical force from the roller, uh, this one is called the pusher. So catcher, cushion, and pusher. Uh, this one is also a little bit tougher, and you, you guys will feel it, that it's a little bit uh, more dense. It's a little bit more dense, it's a little bit stronger. Uh, something that is very important is for you guys to square, square your blankets the best you can to the, to the table, uh, 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 to the bed. And this one, since this one is a little bit shorter, uh, we're gonna center this 
we're gonna center this blanket to the center of the press. Now, we're gonna proceed to uh, set the pressure, all right? Uh, I have some, um, some of the elements that I'm gonna need for, for printing and setting up my pressure, such as newsprint, I'm gonna need my plate, I'm gonna need my registration sheet. And I am gonna need some test strips, which are uh, over here. So I'm just gonna have this on hand, ready to go. And these, these uh, test strips are the same kind of paper that you guys are using for printing. And it, that's very, very important. So you guys want to use the very same materials, very same uh, uh, layers uh, as you would if you were printing for real. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this part of the assembly under my blankets. So this is uh, how it's gonna work. I'm gonna put one sheet of paper down. This is newsprint paper. So one sheet down. Then the second layer is gonna be my registration sheet. Yeah. The third layer is gonna be my plate. And then uh, I'm gonna use uh, three sheets of paper uh, on top of my ensemble. Now, since we are working on setting up the pressure, I'm gonna take a little piece of, the, of those test strips and I'm gonna place it uh, in an area of your plate that will give you a reading along the edge and that, and that hopefully will also give you a little bit of a reading of the actual image. Uh, you don't want to do it right in the center because you won't get a, a good reading of the pressure <clears throat> and you also don't want to do it in, in an area with no image because you also won't get a good reading. So this corner is kind of ideal because I have the edge of the plate and I have some image area happening there. All right, so I'm gonna put three sheets of paper right on top. Uh, for efficiency, I'm just gonna simply fold this over and this is gonna be two, two, two sheets total. And then I'm gonna put one more. The function of these three layers of paper it's to increase the pressure and also to protect the blanket from any ink that could possibly reach. Now, very gently, I'm going to set my blankets down, making sure that it does not shift in uh, my plate and my paper. And now I'm gonna set the pressure. So as I mentioned, the press had been set to zero. That means that both on the left and the right, the roller is gently touching the bed. But I need to increase the pressure a little bit because there is no space for all of this to go through. So I'm going to do, uh, what do you think, Laura? One turn, see how it goes? Sure. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do one turn, and remember that this is a trial and error process, so you won't hit the perfect pressure at once, but we need to try one, get close, figure out if we need to increase or decrease, and then we go from there. So righty tighty, lefty loosey. So I want to make it loose, so I'm gonna turn it 
to the left or counterclockwise. So I'm going to do one full turn. And these plates are very thin compared to our linoleum blocks. So that's why we'll start our test with just one raised up one turn. For the linoleum blocks, that would have been way too tight. Way too tight. All right. So notice that when I place my blankets, I place the, the end of the blankets as close as possible to where the roller meets the bed. And that way I don't have so much of an excess to the other side of the, of the bed. Uh, you guys have to manage, make, again, like it's important to make sure that this is square so that it doesn't get caught uh, in the middle of the process if the blankets happen to be a little bit crooked. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start cranking the, te the, the press. And I'm gonna be very careful. Uh, I, uh, I'm always looking around, making sure that uh, I'm not in the way of someone or someone is in my way. Uh, so everybody stays uh, safe. All right, so we're gonna take a look and see if we got any kind of results. When you guys are taking the blankets out, you still need to be very, very careful because you could potentially still move them, move your, um, your paper and your plate. All right, so what I'm looking for is to see the embossing of the edge of the plate on the paper. So hopefully it'll show us a little bit on the, on the video, but I can clearly see the embossing. And remember, this is just the back. This, this is just the back of the, of, the, um, of the paper, the printing paper. So let's take a look at the front. So on the front, I can, I can also see a little bit of that embossing. Ho hopefully you guys can maybe see a little bit. And then I'm also going to see if there is any of the image that actually transferred to the, to the paper. So this, this one is way too small to show in the video, but um, what I like to do is to look at the direction of the light and have the embossing cast a shadow in itself. And that tells me a little bit of the, the strength of that embossing. So I'm actually quite pleased. It has a really nice embossing. And we're gonna um, uh, maybe adjust it a little bit as we print. Uh, what do you think, Laura? Sh should we increase or decrease the pressure? <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was one turn. I think this which you will definitely not be able to see in the video, um, would probably print okay. And I think we would also be okay to increase the pressure a tiny bit. Okay. So either printing it as is here or just a tiny bit of an increase. Um, and that's something, again, you can do in this test phase. Yeah, definitely. So let's give that a try uh, for us to be in a, in a better spot. At this point, since we are getting already positive results, as Laura mentioned, the increases or decreases of pressure should have in, in very, very short increments. So as little as an eighth of a turn sometimes. In this case, let's do a quarter uh, of a turn. And that hopefully will give us a, a good result. So remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So we're gonna go clockwise to the right. And a quarter would simply uh, put this end a uh, quarter of a turn, right? So that's that's a quarter. And here, this side, same idea. All right, perfect. So that, that looked really good. And now uh, we are ready to do a test print. Hi everyone, here we are with our invisible plate. 
that is going to become visible in one second when I start inking it. Um, I have my ink here, a lovely shade of blue, just like in relief, the relief printing. We're going to warm, warm up the molecules by um, just kind of pushing the ink back and forth, getting it ready to go. This inking process is quite different than the relief inking process. And so I'm going to go through all the steps. Um, the first thing I'm going to think about is if my ink is too tacky, too sticky, um, or too loose. And one of the ways I'm going to test that is by testing the elasticity of the ink, by kind of dipping down and pulling up. And I feel like these are some, it's, it's got some nice long strands that are staying attached, but not staying attached too long. And to me, this ink should be, work well for, our, for this purpose. We'll talk about modifiers more in class, but I have burnt plate oil here, um, which is a boiled linseed oil, so it doesn't hurt the paper. And if you need to, you can add a little bit of this to the ink to loosen it up. Um, again, we'll go over that more, just like with tightening the pressure or loosening the pressure, a little bit at a time goes a long way. So if you put, if you put equal amounts or even 50% oil to 50 to a hundred percent of the amount of ink, it's going to end up being way too much and it'll ruin that batch of ink. So you'll have to start over. So whenever you're working with modifiers, just a little bit at a time, I usually pour it next to it and then take my palette knife and just work a little bit, a little bit in and then test it and then decide if I want to add more. Okay. So I also have these little um, mat board cards here, which is the what I'm going to use to start applying my ink. These are stored um, basically in front of me, um, behind the blue press, and we'll point those out in class. There's a little thin of them on the counter next to the poster. So uh, Laura, why don't you use your palette knife? Oh, that's such a great question, David. If I use my palette knife um, to apply ink to my acrylic plate, I will add a ton of new and interesting marks mm -hmm. to my plate that I didn't want. Or maybe, maybe if you do, if you do want to try using another, an alternative tool to the dry point needle to add marks onto your plate, you're certainly welcome to find fun and exciting tools like nails or screws even or the edge of this palette knife but this palette knife will add its own take to my image and i don't want that whereas these cards are soft and will not hurt my image as i'm inking up my plate um something that's important to note about entire okay so i'm i'm dipping i'm dipping my um, card into into my ink um, just a little bit oops that was more than I want just a little bit at a time so there's a little kind of blobule on there I'm gonna start by applying the ink and I'm actually gonna turn it you can you can start by kind of going in horizontal and vertical I like to start by making a swirling motion the reason to go in, to move your hand, to move the ink in different directions as you apply it to the plate is that your dry point lines are a combination of two things. You have both scratched into the surface. I'm going to get a little bit more ink to spread around. You've scratched underneath the surface of your acrylic, so you've incised a line below the surface. But with dry point, the bigger thing that you've done is raise up the little particles of acrylic to create a burr. Now my um, card has gotten a little soft, so I'm going to turn to a different edge so that I again can kind of spread this ink around. So the function of all of these steps of inking is to spread ink evenly across the whole surface of my image Oops. and also to make sure that I'm catching ink on all sides of that burr.
dry point is I'm just going to keep explaining things as I keep inking my plate here. Dry point is um, an intaglio process. And okay, I just need a tiny bit. And I and as I'm doing this, I'm spreading my ink all the way to every edge of this plate, even in in parts that might not have an image area. Because as you'll see in a minute, you end up with some, you can end up with some ink left on the surface. And you want to make sure that that tone, which is called plate tone, is even across your whole image. So you want to make sure to get, even if you only put a few lines in the center, you really want to get across to the whole thing. Okay, so I spread ink across my plate. I'm actually going to switch to a new card. And now I'm going to try to remove, I feel like there's something on my table here. Oh yeah, there is. There's some linoleum. Okay, well now I've made a mess under my plate. Um, the next step is I'm going to try to remove the excess ink. And I know the, the thing about intaglio printing in general is you have to apply the ink to the whole surface, but then you're ending up removing the ink from most of the surface. And that's just how the process is. So if I remove more ink at this phase, then it's going to make my next phase a little bit easier. So I was starting to say dry point is a subset is, is a, an intaglio medium. The other um, techniques that are included under intaglio are etching, which uses acid to eat away at the surface of the plate, though for that you need a metal plate. Um, and engraving, which is the first intaglio technique where you use a sharp tool and carve, much like we did um, in relief carving, and carve along the surface, carve under the surface of the, of the image. Okay, so now I'm gonna move to my next phase. I have made quite a mess on my table here. I'm not gonna worry about it right now. So I've got ink and I'm gonna try to hold it up to the light because it's clear, you can kind of see there's some areas, especially that don't have the lines, that have, don't have any lines, where I've actually removed most of the ink from that area. The tarlatan phase is the next phase. So this is tarlatan. It is cheesecloth that's been starched so that it's stiffer than cheesecloth. It has some structure. We'll have little pieces or, you know, the appropriately sized pieces that you'll need um, in bins that are labeled over on the opposite side of the studio from where I'm standing, next to where the cards are. Now, the tarlatan can be quite stiff, so I like to start by stretching it on the diagonal to just loosen it up. This piece has already been loosened, so it's not really doing that much, but this just kind of um, makes it a little bit more flexible for the next phase. The next thing I'm gonna do is create a smooth, surface for wiping. So I'm going to take my tarlatan and I'm going to start to fold in the edges on themselves. So that they're all contained in the back. And then on the front, I have one smooth-ish flat um, face of the tarlatan. And you'll see why that's important in a second. So I'm going to tuck this ball of tarlatan into my hand. And um, like I'm palming a basketball. And I'm going to start to... I have to hold this in my hand to do this part. Um, I'm going to start to gently... Um, and with a very limp wrist. Which... Um, which I feel like is not what you're normally told in most art processes, right? Use your whole arm, your whole body. Here, I'm telling you to just use your wrist and to just 
gently move across the surface of the plate. Now, this tarlatan phase is doing two things. You are again trying to move, redistribute the ink evenly across the, the plate and making sure that it's getting into, still getting into all the lines. Into and around. And it takes a little bit. Laura, I think you said that there's two things that the Tarotan does. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and I only said one. So you're simultaneously distributing the ink and trying to get it into the lines while you are also removing it from, removing the excess from the rest of the plate. And so I want to just emphasize that the point of this Tarotan isn't to take it and wipe it across so you're just like removing it off the surface because then you're gonna pull all of the ink out of the lines that you want in the lines, because that's how you're gonna see your image. And so you are slowly, and you can see it's starting to transfer to my tarlatan. And if I, if I get too much ink on this face, then I can open up my little packet, my little ball of tarlatan, and I'm just gonna re create a new, a new clean front face there and you'll see this will start to fill up with the ink but you have to be patient and you have to just do a little bit at a time and you can see my lines are starting to starting to appear more clearly the other thing that I've noticed in my own work and just with people in general um, wiping dry point plates is we have a tendency to to really focus on the center because it's actually easier but um, it's important to make sure that you're also tarlatining the edges or that as you're doing the edges you're not doing the center so that if I'm working on this section I'm like hitting the center here and then I do the center and then I go on this section I'm hitting the center here so sometimes the center ends up with a lot more attention which means that sometimes you over wipe that area and then the edges end up with less attention and more plate tone, which is that um, ink that's left on the surface, which we'll see in a bit. Okay, so this is getting pretty close. Um, it's getting pretty close to being able to move to the next phase. And I'm actually gonna move this onto a clean surface of the table so you can see it without the ink behind it. Um, again, the, these acrylic plates are kind of cool because you can see through them, or normally a metal plate you definitely can't see through. But um, you can see that a lot, of, a lot of the surface is exposed. I have plenty of ink in my lines, and I'm going to move on to the next phase. The next phase is surface wiping, and we're going to do that with um, newspaper. You can use plain newsprint. Traditionally, we would use the phone book. And there's not much phone book left in the world. Um, so we're, we're switching over to this newsprint. Um, so just like the tarlatan, the newsprint is picking up some of the surface. I want to emphasize, sorry, some of the ink that's on the surface. I want to emphasize that you want to be very gentle. You want to be very gentle. So I use two fingers. You can use one finger, you can, whatever, whatever makes sense for you. But I usually use just the tips of, of my two fingers and you can't feel this obviously, but I'm just barely gliding across the surface. Because dry point is done by lifting a burr of acrylic in this case above the surface of the plate, it means that every time I'm moving this paper over the surface, I'm hitting the burr of those lines. And 
I don't want to accidentally remove too much ink from those lines. So now I've turned my paper over and this is just, it takes some patience, it takes some work. If you, if you loosen your ink too much, um, to go back to the modifiers, if you loosen your ink too much, then you can end up um, just pulling the ink out of the lines and back onto the surface. And if you don't, if you don't loosen your ink and it's too stiff, then it wants to just attach itself to the surface and not, um, gonna get a new strip, and not come off. We'll see, I can already tell that I have ink on the back of my plate, and so some of what I'm seeing is not on the surface, it's behind, um, which is an interesting phenomenon of a transparent plate. And in this image, we, um, it's a test plate, which I want all of you, you have three of these acrylic plates, and one of them should be a test plate to test the strength of the lines or hatches or cross hatches um, that you're making. So you can see what you're going to need for your final for your final design. Um, this plate has a variety, as you'll see once it's printed, of hatched lines, cross hatched, and then going down three hatches, like three layers, four layers, five layers, six layers, or no, actually the last one is S curves. Um, there is often a tendency to make really delicate marks that when printed, can be printed, but it takes a lot of finesse for them to come through. And um, then the other tendency is actually to go the other way, to um, print too hard. All right, so here is my plate and I paper wiped it um, as far as I think I'm going to at this point. I think that the ink is actually a little bit stiff and the things, so it's not um, as coming as, the lines are not coming as clean as I want them to. And I can see that especially in, for example, here where there's a gradated scale of really, really light fine lines to much deeper, um, stronger, bolder lines, but the ink is not um, completely being removed from in between each sets of those lines. So I might have expected that for the much heavier lines, but for these lighter and middle lines, I would have expected there to be more ink removed from in between. And the same thing is true for my various hatching and cross hatching. Um, so we're going to print it and then I'm going to modify my ink a bit and um, print it again and kind of show that comparison of the two images and how the ink can affect what we're seeing. So the next step after I wipe my edges, so I want to make sure that I wipe, I'm holding my plate um, around the edges and I'm wiping each side because if I don't, this, this plate, though very, very thin, is still a dimensional object, and this ink will print in those beautiful embossed plate marks on the edge of my plate, and I don't want that. So I'm going to bring my plate, holding it from the bottom, bring it over here, setting it. I'm going to set it on my registration, but I'm going to not try to have my gloves not touch my registration, and I can move it if I need to. Boop. Okay, I'm going to move that in a second. And then the next thing I'm going to do, actually I'll take my gloves off now and move it. And then I'm going to go get my paper, which has been soaking in a damp pack, which we showed how to do. Yeah, it's perfect, right? Um, which we showed how to do um, in another video and I have it over on the other side of the wall in the clean 
paper area so that I know that it's not getting any ink on it. Again, the reason that we soak our paper for intaglio prints or whenever we soak our paper for prints is to open up the pores and loosen the sizing, the glue that holds all the fibers together so that it's better able to press itself into better able to press itself into the lines. So I have my damp pack with my soaking paper. Here I only have one sheet, but however many sheets you think you're gonna print in a day, you wanna stack them all together. And I have my clean towel, which I'm gonna use to dry my paper to the consistency that I want it to, which is that I don't want dripping water. I just want an even, dampness. So with my very clean hands, I'm going to just rub the back of this towel. And when I'm done printing for the day, I'm going to hang this towel to dry on the hanging rack right there. And then when it's done, when it's done drying, that is, I will fold it and put it back here in this towel bin to be used another day. Okay, so I'm gonna take my paper, and again, holding your paper corner to corner is the best way to prevent any kind of creasing. So I create a little hammock, and I'm going to walk my paper carefully back to my registration, and I'm gonna line it up, and the way that I like to do this, rather than trying to line it up all the way above everything, um, I like to start with two, sorry, with one edge, two corners, and I hold it up in the air so it's not touching the plate, and hold it open with an open hand with two fingers, and then I'm gonna slowly lower the paper down. I do that because Again, it's really hard to tell if you're lined up properly with all four edges this way, but if I know that my two corners and one whole edge are lined up and I can move it around and maneuver it, then um, I have a higher chance that all of four edges are going to line up. Now I have my three sheets of newsprint, which again are acting as a packing material. Oh no. I carefully lower them so again I'm not moving my paper. And then, oops, carefully lowering my blankets. Kind of rolling them across the surface so that they don't create a wind that moves my, moves everything. Okay, and I'm on the wrong side of the press. So go to the right side of the press. And We'll spin it. Spin the wheel. Okay. Now I'm through. Carefully lift my blankets up. And my newsprint. And you can see that there's good embossing of the plate on the back of the paper. And I'll slowly lift it up. And I have my first proof, my first test. I think there are some things I can improve on and I think that those things um, can be improved in the inking rather than in the mark making. Um, if you find that lines are way too light you might want to go back in and um, give them a little bit more strength, but I'm going to modify my ink and reprint it and see what we can get on the next impression. So this is take two for proofing my plate and I actually cleaned the ink off. Um, I actually cleaned the ink off. You know what? I have another problem with my plate, which is something I meant to say before you start drawing on the front side, you want to remove the protective plastic, which I did on the front side, but I didn't remove the protective plastic on the back side. So I'm going to remove that now that I see that it's there. 
and just set it to the side and I'll throw it out in a bit. Um, okay, so the ink in the last attempt was too stiff. And so now I've modified the ink with plate oil. So I put some plate oil on my surface, um, on my table surface here. And I just use my palette knife to move a little bit at a time. This is way more than I'll need. I just moved a little bit at a time into this, um, into my ink and I worked it and mix it just like I'd be mixing two colors together. And now the way I'm going to show you the way that I think that it's the correct um, stiffness or like looseness is I'm picking some up on my palette knife and I'm turning it on its edge and I'm kind of just watching it. It's very mesmerizing. Watching it drip. And you want it to drip, you want it to drip, and you want it to drip not too fast and not too slow. So you can see it's a it's like a pretty slow drip it didn't just all come off my palette knife all at once um and we'll try this you know it'll be my second proof and we'll see we'll see if it works i'm not going to walk you through the whole inking process again and i'll see you after i've printed it and let you know how it goes so we have um the second proof and here it is and I'm just lining up my two proofs on the press so I can do a little bit of a side-by-side -side analysis, self-critique. So the first proof, which is on the left here, has no plate tone. It's wiped so clean that this area, which is where the plate was and the borders are the same level of white, which is great. Here, and my second proof on the right, I was a little bit nervous about over wiping because my first plate, I both cleaned all the plate tone off, but I think in some areas I lost some of the depth of my marks. So here I'm pointing to a, a swirly, which we'll see in the next print, which you can almost not see because I've wiped it away. And then also there's a fuzzy, a fuzzy quality to these lines, which might be hard to see in the video, um, but kind of tells me that the line got broken where the ink isn't where the ink is no longer because I wiped it away. So in this one, I might have gone, I might have overcorrected a little bit too much. I might have left too much plate tone, which you can see especially around the edges, which I did note in the last um, segment that that's a common, a common um, mistake, but also in the center. So here is that swirly that I was a little bit nervous about losing again. And I didn't wipe, I didn't over wipe it, it's still there pretty clearly, but then there's a section here where I left some plate tone. So not that that's bad. Um, I wanted to make sure that I could see all of the lines. I really wanted you to have a chance to see where I have my hatching. So I have one, two, three, four, five, which are um, backwards because I wrote them forwards, but I have hatching, cross hatching, three sets of cross hatching, four sets of cross hatching, five sets of cross hatching, and then here is a series of S curves. So the hatches are S's and I built more up in the center. And then um, lots of other designs like gradated scale here of lighter pressure lines to darker pressure lines. And you can kind of see, see that gradation there. Um, that's gonna be my final proof. And now I'm ready to addition my piece, which I'm not going to because it's my test plate. But those are the kinds of adjustments and ways you want to think about um, before you decide on your final image.